Starship and its vehicle Super Heavy were unveiled by Musk back in 2019. The pair is designed to carry a crew and cargo apparently to the moon, Mars, or anywhere else in the world. But it's actually been a while now since Elon Musk has been talking about colonizing Mars, don't you think so? His dream is almost within reach for SpaceX, we suppose. But SpaceX's CEO recently revealed that they have a new problem with the Mars plan. So stay with us until the end of the video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the fact that Elon Musk revealed the real reason behind SpaceX failing to somehow reach Mars. So what could it be? We will also discuss some important details of the matter and enlighten you with a bunch of other news surrounding Elon and Tesla. So stay with us until the end of the video to find out. It's no secret that several tech billionaires have expressed interest in colonizing Mars in recent years. But it's also well known that creating a sustainable and permanent food is also very important if you somehow manage to go to the red planet. No person can survive without food and water either for relatively short periods of time. Did you guys know that a person can survive for 8 to 21 days without food and water? However, that becomes irrelevant when talking about longer periods needed to qualify as a civilization. For better understanding, you should know that the trip to Mars takes between 6 to 9 months, including the return trip. So the transmission of the spacecraft to provide pre-packaged food is definitely not sufficient. Packaging enough food to last that long is not an intelligent option. In fact, it would take decades for a civilization to be established on the planet itself, let alone supplying food all the time. Furthermore, the agricultural revolution marked the transition from the hunter-gatherer to flourishing civilizations in human history. As we settled down into farms and agriculture, we began to rely less on hunting and more on farming. It is therefore of utmost importance that Mars has a viable civilization that uses space farms. As seen in the movie The Martian, Mark Watney can barely survive by eating potatoes grown in Martian dirt fertilized with feces in the habitat. Despite the obvious challenges posed by this mission, being able to grow crops on Mars is a viable prospect in the long run, as low gravity makes it difficult to distribute water, deprives roots of oxygen as well as stagnant air, and reduces evaporation while increasing leaf temperatures. Wageningen University of Research in the Netherlands conducted a study that grew 10 different crops in lunar and Martian soils simulating a regolith on Mars, which is made up of inorganic materials covering the rocks below. Unlike the soil on Earth, which is lacking organic material on Mars, regolith is crushed volcanic rock without organic matter. However, only 9 of the 10 plants were actually able to grow. For those who want to know, spinach wasn't one of them. Later, they harvested edible vegetables from these plants that included quinoa, radish, and tomatoes. Moreover, some researchers have simulated growing crops on the surface of Mars, including garden cresses, arugula, and chives. Likewise, radishes, garden crests, and rye could be grown from seeds according to the study. Moving on, because plants can't grow in the outdoor Mars environment, the only solution to that is that they must grow inside which necessarily includes the difficulty of watering them due to the lack of gravity. This is because on the surface of the red planet, it would simply move over the surface rather than be absorbed into the soil. Simon Gilroy, studying how gravity affects plant growth at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, explains some important concepts. According to the researchers, the humankind would actually be able to feed itself on Mars through insect farming and cellular agriculture. In order for the vegetables to be grown on Mars, it's necessary to send seeds and agricultural equipment from Earth. In the study, it was also demonstrated that vegetables themselves can grow on the planet's regolith. And to make this a reality, we should first transport the crops to the International Space Station to perform tests and to record the promising results. Did you know that lettuce has been selected by the European Space Agency as a good option for growing in space? This is because it grows quickly and improves research. Conversely, lettuce is one of the least nutritional crops, so researchers recommended growing it with Acropolis beans that have higher protein levels and nutritional value. But wait, there's more to that. For astronauts, maintaining stamina, as well as maintaining a balanced diet, is particularly important. To make sure that the plants grow properly, researchers suggest placing them in a centrifuge above the International Space Station. Meanwhile, many researchers have suggested that hydroponic systems in which plants are grown without soil, but rather using water as a medium. The problem with this solution, however, is the difficulty in mixing hydroponic solutions in the same manner as they do in space. 
To compare the different densities and weights of water cannot segregate cold and warm water like their earthly counterparts. As a result, when the lettuce roots ingest the oxygen from the liquid-based solution, they become depleted of the oxygen. In principle, you could solve this by blowing air through the solution. However, due to the physical constraints, this is impossible. As a result, by generating a certain amount of gravity, a centrifuge helps solve this problem. By doing so, astronauts are able to operate the system just like they would on Earth. As is unsurprising again, this solution may only be useful in a controlled test environment with small controlled experiments. There's not enough centrifuge space to operate a farm on Mars, with enough crops to feed everyone who could possibly inhabit the planet. Moreover, increasing the centrifuge's size would present a host of engineering challenges. It is nonetheless a promising possibility for improving food production. Despite not being the most effective method of growing plants on Mars, they could still prove vital to conducting trials with planets on the International Space Station. These experiments allowed us to gain insight into the growth of crops and partial gravity levels in space through the measurement of these parameters. A team of University of Villanova astrobiology students have conducted a study of Martian gardens to explore which crops could survive using a synthetic soil designed to mimic Martian soil known as Martian soil simulant or MSS. However, the simulant is often denser because it is based on volcanic rock found in the Mojave Desert. A total of 45 plant species have been tested since the program was launched in 2017, and these include hops and barley. Moreover, control plants are also present, which are grown in the potting mix in the same conditions as these plants. Meanwhile, perchlorates, a hazardous chemical found in the Martian soil, pose a danger to humans, especially if they are consumed accidentally. That's why using this chemical for harvesting crops on Mars requires first removing it from the soil. One of the challenges of successfully farming crops has to do with getting enough sunlight, according to the Villanova students. With this, the lack of sunlight on Mars causes plants to grow more slowly and may not reach their full potential. As part of the Villanova project, all of the Mars environmental conditions were deemed to be replicated. However, how habitable do we consider Mars to be for humans and plants? It's certainly not the most comfortable place to inhabit either. The fact that it is solder and desolate on Mars, when compared to Earth, isn't likewise easy. Another important thing to note is its fragility, because of which plants can't survive. In fact, the movie The Martian illustrates this perfectly when Mark Watney accidentally exposes his potato to Martian atmosphere, causing them to freeze to death in an instant. At its maximum intensity, its sunlight is around 43 times as dense as that of Earth, and its atmosphere is approximately 190th as dense as the Earth's. So on a positive note, beneficial gases such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen account for 95% and 2.6% of the Earth's atmosphere respectively. That said, this is it for today's video. What is your take on this matter? Tell us in the comments. If you want to see our upcoming video, ring the bell icon, and don't forget to like our video as well. That's all from my side. Thanks for watching.